Fellas, do you ever feel distressed? Do you ever go on the internet and you can't believe the things that you see? People just put anything on there! Don't worry, I've corralled some of those people here. They're in quarantine, in my computer screen. Stay in there! Welcome to Facts and Opinions, where I, we decide, I was about to say I, but we collectively decide, is the thing that's on that TV a fact or is it an opinion? We're gonna see what these morons on the screen and in the internet at large believe, and we're gonna see if it's true or not. Let's find out. Boom. Oh, hell yeah. I love this one. I love this one. The McDonald's breakfast menu is the biggest gaslight in marketing history. Everything on it is objectively worse than the normal menu, but they trick people into thinking it's good by making it hard to get. And only gettable. Get it? It's not a word. In the early morning when your standards are lower. Easy too? I'm seeing a lot of love for the McDonald's dollar menu. You guys sponsor it or something? Hash bounds go crazy. I... All right. Maybe I... I, I... God, I think I'm kind of giving away my answer here. This person is spitting. It's just marketing. McDonald's breakfast is genuinely a happy meal for adults. It's reminding you of what it was like when it was special. And I'm not kidding about that. I'm not, this isn't a bit or a bait or anything. I think McDonald's breakfast was very special at a very important formative time in your life. It was a big treat. You and your family would go to McDonald's and get the breakfast, and it was like a big day, like before you went camping or to the beach or maybe an amusement park, something like that. And I think people retain that, right? No, this is a fact. It's 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 marketing. You've all been marketed to. The hash browns are just potatoes, dude. They're not even special. It's fried potatoes. McDonald's breakfast, uh, it, it's it's like one of those items you get in a roguelike where it induces a static status effect throughout the rest of the run. You've been afflicted with toxin for the rest of the day. You're gonna be so tired. That's why I get it in the afternoon. That should have never been allowed. Didn't that tank their sales? Am I making that up? One of you guys look that up. I don't want to. <laughs> Editor, you look it up and put it in the video. Thank you. What do I pay you for? Did somebody say male grooming products? This video is sponsored by Manscaped. Manscaped offers the best tools and liquid formulations for the three odor zones. One of them is your body, the other two start with B2, and I'm not gonna say what they are. You know what they are. Manscaped hooked me up with a bunch of stuff from their Performance All-in-One Performance Package 4.0. Wow! There's one of the words right there. You can see it on the words. The first thing to highlight is the Lawnmower 4.0 Body Trimmer. When you turn it on, it turns on. There's an LED light and there's a ceramic blades, which I'm supposed to show you close up, but I don't feel like focusing. Just trust me, okay? They look nice. Advanced skin safe, that's trademarked, technology, with, which reduces nicks and cuts on the most sensitive parts of your body. Again, you know what they are. It's, it's magic. It still works. My pants are soaked, but my, my trimmer is still working like a dream. The Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer has a super smart cordless charging system, and apparently they could go for up to 90 minutes, which sounds like a lot of time. Here's the dock. Ooh, you see how the lights are going up? That means that it's charging. This one, all you have to do is tap the button three times, like this, like magic, boom, 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 and look at that, it's locked. You can hit the button as much as you want, and that joint is not turning on, because it's travel lock. Also in this package are these two little babies, right over here. The crop preserver is something that you put on after a shower, and you just leave it on for all day odor protection. There's also a crop reviver, which is like a little aloe vera spritz. This one's more like a lotion. And this one's more like a little spritz, a little bit of a refreshing little mist. It's nice. This is the Weed Whacker. It's a nose, hair, and ear hair trimmer. And it is the same advanced skin-safe TM technology. So no matter how short the hairs are, you're not going to get hurt. And for a limited time, you'll get all this stuff in the performance package. Plus, you get this lovely shed travel bag and some lovely anti-chafing boxer briefs from Manscaped themselves. So get to manscaped.com today and get 20% off plus free international shipping and two free gifts when you use the code Kony at checkout. Manscaped, always use the right tools for the job. Boom. Oh, baby. By the way, Sonic Avatar, remember that as I read this out. Sonic's reputation as a franchise will never be undone, no matter how hard Frontiers and the movie may try. 
It's always going to have the stigma of the franchise's mistakes. Will Sonic ever escape mediocrity? The 6 out of 10, 5 out of 10 experience that he's been putting on for the last 20 years? By the way, the movie wasn't even that good. You guys know that, right? Like, it was fine. It's just a buddy comedy. Just watch a single buddy comedy ever. And, and, and Knuckles sounds like he's trying really hard not to be British, which only makes him sound like he's eating three bananas the entire movie. You sound like I'm Knuckles. Where's my gems? Where's my gems? All right, what do we think? We think it's, is it true or not? It is true. This is a fact, but when I read this, I don't know about you guys. I thought it was the other way around. Sonic's reputation as a franchise will never be undone. As in, nobody will ever think he's bad because people are always going to love Sonic no matter how many shitty games and movies and whatever come out, which is way more crazy to me, but also still a fact. Other people read it that way too. They're both facts. They're just two different facts. This is the rare double fact. Sonic's reputation is bad, but I mean within the community, the Sonic community, they like him no matter how much bad stuff comes out. Ah, I like this one a lot, actually. The fifth generation of consoles and 64 PS1 Saturn have aged the worst out of any contemporary console generation. Most games on these consoles either have better entry slash versions on later consoles or held back due to 64-bit technology. Uh, anyway, fifth generation of consoles, does it suck or not? A lot of people are saying that's true. Most people are saying that's, but listen, I respectfully disagree. I think this is an opinion. Part of me feels like those games are so hard to go back to because they feel old and outdated now, but they laid so much of the groundwork and foundation for stuff that we kind of just take for granted. Whether it's like camera controls in 3D games or it's the way that exploration works and open world stuff. I think the PS3 generation is the most forgettable. Those games never really stuck out to me. However, I was an adult at that time. And I was not an adult when the N64 PS1 thing came out, right? I think this might be a generational thing. These games are still very special to me, but I'm also, uh, I was there for the commandments, so I don't know. I was there when they invented the microchip and had a computer the size of a, ref of a refrigerator. So whatever, maybe I'm old, I don't know. You guys tell me. Uh, Corn here says, I think the crab would win. And then they linked a video. This video is called Crab vs. Lava. Experiment. Crab vs. Lava. Do you think the crab would win? The crab looks angry. I don't know if you could tell. He has red eyes. By the way, this is on a channel called Cool Ideas. Wh whose idea was this? Most people said the crab would win. Most people are agreeing. They think the crab would win. Uh, <laughs> Game of Thrones moment? Guys, I, I hate to do this. Uh, but it's time to, it's, that's not true. The crab would lose. No, the crab loses. The crab won't win. Proof? I don't, does it exist? Oh my god, it's a real video. I thought this was like a joke thumbnail. I watched the video, crab wins. This crab? This crab on a delicious, on a plate with a delicious puree sauce? That crab wins? Akira, if you aren't getting paid or exceptionally skilled, stop taking competitive games so seriously. People treat how good they are at a game with their inherent self-value, and that's not true. You are more valuable than your skill at a game. Now, <laughs> the second part... Yeah, listen, treat these as two... I only care about the first part. Whether or not you are more valuable as a person than you are at skill at a game, I can't decide that. Not a psychopath, by the way. No, you want me to be parasocial? No, you guys are so valuable. You're also smart and funny and interesting. And that's why you pay me $5 a month. Because you know how to invest your money into fruitful endeavors and content creators who share your values. Thank you so much. I love this community. I'm so proud of all of you. Give me $20. I mean, this one's kind of obvious, right? I think, objectively speaking, yeah, stop taking video games so seriously. There, 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 somebody sent me a tweet from one of the devs of, I think it was Dusk. Matchmaking and sort of rank systems and all this stuff in the modern age have really ruined sort of gaming for a lot of people. Because he was saying that people used to just play this shit to have fun, but now every game has a rank system, and even if it's unranked, there's skill-based matchmaking, and they track your games, right? And nobody's dicking around on, like, Valorant. 
I don't think anybody's ever... I don't think people are going to go back to that, right? Overwatch 2 is built as this competitive experience, and there's a league and everything. Even multiverses, dude. It tracks your wins and losses. I guess you have to go up and look for that information, but... It's, like, competitively focused. Splatoon Rage is the funniest thing. Taking a game seriously is fine. But it's funny <laughs> thinking about a grown man yelling so violently Dude, I've to never even thought, Fetal 6 for. I've never even thought about watching Splatoon Rage videos, but now I want to. I want now to... <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a fun th th stream thing. Splatoon is infuriating. I believe it. Because you're teaming with 8- and 9-year-olds. And your rational brain knows that. But your your primitive monkey brain wants to win. I get it. Okie dokie. Oh, wait a minute. Snakes are the scariest animal. They can move faster than a human without needing legs or wings or underwater travel. Not to mention a good portion of them can murder you with poison or suffocation. Also, they're just unsettling to look at. Point taken. Snakes are very scary. However, ratio. They look like us. The chimpanzees specifically, I think. These got look at those teeth. These are the scariest animals. Because it's essentially a human with no empathy or feeling or really rational thought. Much scarier. Much scarier. Look at that. I think snakes, I see one and I'm like, I don't want to go near that, right? I if I leave it alone, it won't chase me. You're fine. You're safe if you see a snake. If you see a chimp and he thinks you're a threat, he's reading your body language. He knows you're afraid and he'll chase you. Snakes are always aggressive. No, they're not. What are you talking about? I would simply tie a snake in a knot. Not me. I would make a pretzel. I would tie a snake into uh, into like a like a circle and then I would hoo -hoo and then throw him on a tree. I would simply blow it up like a balloon like <laughs> You, wait, that means you have to kiss the snake. Does that mean you ki you grab the snake and you 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 have to blow up in its mouth? Look up shaved chimpanzee. I feel like I'm gonna get in trouble. So let me do that here. Am I allowed to look at this? I mean, it's just an animal, but with it being shaved, it looks different. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. It's nothing but muscle. He would rip off your nose and ears. You're telling me a snake is scarier than that? Why do commentators act like they're comedians? You're just a commentator. You're not bigger than players. One, I'm not, there's no smash on the screen. Why did you come in here for that? I'm not at work right now. You just invaded my home. Why did you come in? And second off, I am better than the players because I get to be on the camera more. People pay attention to me. I, I look at me, listen to me. I get to control the narrative. If I say that a player smells bad, win or lose, the audience is gonna be like, yeah, I guess, I guess Light did really well that set, but Coney said he stinks. I don't know if that's becoming of a top three player. I get to change the narrative however I want. That's why I'm a comedian. That was so weird. Why did he come into here like that? Aha! If game companies want to make as big of a revolution in the sixth gen as of consoles as the seventh gen, they need to switch to VR. You don't think so? Dude, genuinely. This is spitting. It's true, dude. VR stock owner cope? No. No, 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 no. He's spitting. It has been so long since we've had a fucking real generation generational revolution. The jump from 2D to 3D was game-changing. Life-changing. PS1 to PS2, big deal. PS2 to PS3, okay. PS3 to PS4, no. PS4 to PS5, I can't even fucking tell him. If you want a real jump, we have to go to VR. Now, listen, I hate VR. <laughs> I do. But if we really want to make that next jump, we have to do it. But once they perfect it, maybe, maybe this is the thing. Maybe we have to all get into it. Everybody whole hog onto it. And everybody goes VR so that one day they figure it out. Because this whole wishy-washy back and forth like, oh, here's a VR attachment for the PlayStation. Nobody's buying that shit. Just make the next PlayStation VR only. And we suffer through it for like half a generation and then they get it right. I think we should be dragged into the next generation kicking and screaming. And games will suck for about three years. But we get to come out of it like Ready Player One. You guys?
<laughs> oh my god! I get to be Deadpool! We're dead by then? Oh yeah, we're all dead. We're all gonna die. We're all dead by the time VR catches on. I'm 13. I'll be around. Cope. <laughs> Buddy, the oceans are gonna boil. If you're 13, I don't know if you're making it to 40. <laughs> Should have been born sooner, schmuck. Oh, you guys call me old. Oh, Coney is so old. LOL, LMAO. Yeah, well, at least I got to live a full life and have kids. Enjoy late stage capitalism. Hope you get a house one day. Good luck. <laughs> now I'm sad. <laughs> Go fuck yourself, Coney. Luca, the maybe the curtains were just fucking blue meme destroyed media literacy for thousands of people to the point that they can't understand subtle themes in movies slash video games unless they're spelled out right in front of them. If you're wondering what the meme is, hold on. For instance, the curtains were blue. What the author meant slash what your English teacher thinks the author meant. What your teacher thinks the curtains represent this immense depression and his lack of will to carry on. What the author meant the curtains were fucking blue. A lot of people, this, this meme really caught on during my time on the internet, okay, on Facebook back then. Uh, but it sometimes makes the round now. I'm not disagreeing that this is true, but I don't think it's the curtain is blue thing. I don't think it's this rejection of, uh, of subtext. I think it's an obsession with clarity. It's the same reason you see a million things after a movie comes out and it's like, nope, explained the themes of nope. This is the story of Dark Souls, explained, and it's like an hour and a half long, to make sure you don't miss anything at all. I'm blaming the obsession with needing to be right as well. I mean, maybe this is tied in with the fact that so many people just parrot, like, YouTuber uh, sound bites and quotes and, and opinions and stuff, right? I, I'm, I'm genuinely, like, I'm, I'm curious as to what other people think. Hey, comment below, seriously, on this one. I mean it, I actually will read this. All written text should be extremely intentional and full of meaning. It's been two months subbed. I have two cats. Facted opinions are two things. All of those things are true. Thanks for writing in. It's our good friend Tito. Out of everything that goes into a game, uh, into game dev music is the easiest thing to not mess up. It has to be really bad for people to even notice if it's mediocre and nobody pays attention. And if it's phenomenal, then people might give it kudos. Music in games is an afterthought. Is music the least important thing? Damn, this one is divisive. Look at that. You make a song, dickhead. <laughs> he makes music. Tito has something out on Spotify. Go look it up, bro. What the heck? Music is the most important part. That dude got big ass ears. This big. <laughs> On the side of he head. Elephant in chat. Okay, uh, most people say it's not true. Um, wrong, Dumbos. He's right. He's spinning. Dude, music doesn't matter. Good music will elevate a game, it will elevate an experience. But if music is like, okay, uh, Red Dead Redemption 2, one of my favorite games ever made. I love that game. I understand why people don't. Um, I don't know. I don't remember any of the tracks in that game. It had great music at the time, but I don't think you lose anything by having like, okay music. Nobody's going to remember it anyway, for the most part, you know? Multiverses has an ass soundtrack. Yeah, it's not good. I've said this a million times. It's, it's Universal Studios waiting for a ticket music, but it's fine. It's fine. It works out. Mediocre music will not torpedo a game. It won't elevate it, but nobody will really care and notice. Last one! Shadow of the Colossus was never good! This game is a darling, a masterpiece! A 10 out of 10 from everybody! One of the greatest games ever made in some people's minds. Have you played it? Wait a minute. We were just talking about video game music not being important. Wait a minute. Yeah, 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 it's this one! Dude! Dude! Magic! This song? Magic! Oh my god! Music is so important. It really is. It makes or breaks a game. Incredible. 10 out of 10. By the way, this person is, uh, th this person is so fucking wrong. This game rules. It really does. It's an amazing game that deserves its spot in, like, the Pantheon. However, do not play it on PS2. Imagine this game, dude. If I get a remake of any game in, like, I don't know, 2050, 2050, 2100 quality, you know what I mean? Like, year 2100, I want to play this one. Or Bioshock. Oh, my God. I would love Bioshock. Anyway, that's it for Factor Opinion. What'd you guys think? I hope you commented scary animals below or what you think about media literacy in the modern age. I'll read both of those comments, I guess. 
Maybe I'll heart some. I don't know. Bye. Bye, everybody.